and whosoever will that's in the church let him take the water of life how now where you gotta come to get the water to the throne to the throne hallelujah to the lamb to the father that's where he proceeds from Jesus the baptizer in the Holy Ghost oh but now listen these words are the words that were given by the Holy Ghost to the church here is the last word of revelation to all the churches come drink of the water drink of the Holy Ghost drink 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 oh there is something that can break every negative power off your life between the power of the Lord and the power of the Spirit we can walk in perpetual victory we can have a victory after victory after victory through the power that is available to us in the Holy Ghost. Jesus believed in the blessing and he believed in the curse. And Jesus operated in them both. He operated in the blessing and he operated in the curse. The Bible says Jesus cursed a fig tree. And when he cursed it, the Bible says it decreased, it withered, and it died. It decreased, it withered, and, he, and it died. When Jesus put a curse upon it. Well, the Bible also says that Jesus blessed. A few little fish and in blessing putting the blessing on a thing those fish increased they multiplied they expanded to the extent that thousands of hungry people were fed from a few little fish that had a blessing Hallelujah. placed upon them. Hallelujah. And so we see Jesus operated in both. He believed in both. He believed in the blessing and in the curse. And when he wanted to curse, things withered, decreased, and died. When he wanted to bless, they multiplied, increased, and they flourished. Amen. Amen. In the book of Deuteronomy, and don't turn there, I'm just talking, chapter 30, Moses talks about the blessing and the curse. In that chapter, when Moses speaks of the blessing, he associated life and good. When he spoke of the blessing, he tied into the concept of the blessing the word life and the word good. So anything good is a blessing. Moses also spoke of the curse. And when he spoke of the curse in that chapter, he associated with the curse evil and death. So anything that comes under the heading of evil or that brings about or causes death, it comes under the heading of a curse. Amen. Now, unfortunately, many people are operating under the curse and not the blessing. There is much evil that always plagues them in one shape or another. And instead of flourishing and increase, they're always struggling because the curse brings about decrease. You see. Even many Christians, listen and very carefully listen, even many believers live 
himself under a curse rather than the blessing. In this lesson, we're going to see how we can break the curse. Somebody ought to shout amen. 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 Now open your Bibles with me, please, to the book of Revelation chapter 22. And again, I'm going to be traveling as fast as I can because I want to cram in as much as I can get in. So you can see it. Amen. amen. Now notice, if you will, Revelation chapter 22. Because of the Holy Ghost, no believer needs to live under a curse. Hallelujah. I'm going to show you from the word. Are you all ready? And he showed me, John says, this angel showed me a pure river of water of life. Of course, this is in reference to the Holy Spirit. A pure river of water of life. Or you can say living water. He showed me a pure river of living water water. And Ezekiel says, wherever these waters go, there is life. In other words, wherever this Holy Spirit flows, it breaks the curse of death. Hallelujah. Notice, he showed me a pure river of living water, or waters of life, clear as crystal, proceeding out. Notice, they proceed out. In other words, these rivers, this river flows. What does it do? Flow. Praise God, it can flow to you. Now notice these rivers proceed. Jesus said, the Holy Ghost proceedeth from the Father. Amen. He is a baptizer. He says, I receive from the Father and I give the Holy Ghost to you. Amen. So the Holy Ghost proceeds, listen, from the throne of God, that verse says, and of the Lamb. So it proceeds from the Father through Christ to us. This is a river of life. It proceeds, it flows. Notice what happens when it comes, look at verse 3, and I want to shout already, Wow! And there shall be no what? No more Curse, wow, because of the flow of the Holy Ghost, life drives out the curse. There shall be no more curse. Notice what it says. But, or you can say rather, rather than the curse, but instead of the curse, the throne of God and of the Lamb shall be in it. Now what comes from the throne that drives out the curse? You tell me. River of waters of life. See, the throne is significant because from it proceeds the Holy Spirit. From the throne proceeds rivers of living water. So because the throne of God and what proceeds from the throne will dwell in this holy place, there can no curse be there at the same time. Well, we can close the book and start shouting. Notice, if you will now, verse 16. I, Jesus have sent mine angel to testify, to testify unto you these things where? So notice that this message is only for the churches, plural. Jesus said the world cannot receive the Holy Spirit. Hallelujah. See, the Holy Spirit is just for the churches. Praise God. If we are a church over here on Ivy Lane in Orlando, there should be a river flowing to us. Glory to God. Did you get in the river today? 
Well, you see, you got to get in in order to have the curse broken. Because where the river flows, there is no more. There is no more. There is no more curse, you see. Notice, look at the next verse, verse eight, uh, 17. Hallelujah. And the spirit and the bride say, come. Now, of course, in this is only a reference to the church. See, the world can't come get the Holy Spirit. But notice you have to come. The spirit. And, of course, this is only to the churches. The spirit of God and the bride of Christ. That's you and I. We need to tell every believer, come, get Holy Ghost filled. Hallelujah. And the spirit and the bride say, come. And let him that hears the message, what? And then, see, see, before I became a preacher, once I got the Holy Ghost, it was my job to tell everybody else, come on, get in the river. Come on, I know a place. I know a place where you can get drunk in the Holy Ghost. Come on. Hallelujah. Not enough to say you're saved. Not enough to say you've accepted Christ. Have you drank of the river? Come on. Now notice it says, let the bride, let the spirit, let everybody who hear this say come. And let him that is a first do what? See, that's what the come is for, the thirsty. There are many people in the body of Christ who are thirsty. They're thirsty. There's something missing. There's something lacking. There's an emptiness. There's a void. They, oh, yes, what you need is the Holy Ghost. I know you carry a Bible. I know you teach Sunday school, but, but what you need, that void you feel, is because you hadn't drank of the Holy Ghost that drives away the curse. Well, I got a thousand things I want to talk to you about. Notice what your Bible says. And let him that is a first come. And whosoever will that's in the church, let him take the water of life. How? Now, where you got to come to get the water? To the throne. To the throne. Hallelujah. To the Lamb, to the Father, that's where he proceeds from. Jesus the baptized in the Holy Ghost. Hell, oh, but now listen. These words are the words that were given by the Holy Ghost to the church. Here is the last words of revelation to all the churches. Come, drink of the water, drink of the Holy Ghost, drink, drink, drink. Oh, there is something that can break every negative power of your life. Notice, if you will, St. John chapter 7 and verse 37. Hallelujah. Care how long you've been saved? Without the Holy Ghost, there are going to be some empty places in your life. And anything empty is associated with the curse, you see. Notice, please, St. John chapter 7. Look at verse 37. In the last day, that great day of the feast, Jesus obeyed his own instruction. Jesus stood and he did what? Why? He's saying, come. He's saying, come. He's saying, come. Come get the water. Come get the Holy Ghost. Come become spirit filled. Come drink until you're full. Get off your seat of do nothing. Get yourself a thirst. A thirst that's so deep. A, a thirst that's so strong that you run to the altar. That you run to the throne because of your desperation. He says, come. Notice what Jesus says. If any man thirst, that's always the qualifier. Let him do what? So you got to come. 
But here he makes it clear. Come to me. Because I'm the baptizer. Come to me. And do what? Do what? That's what you got to do. Now what are you drinking? You, by God, you're drinking the blessing. You're drinking something into your soul that will drive out every curse the devil has tried to put on your life. But you got to see it enough to get a hunger and a thirst that is so deep it's not quenchable except the Holy Ghost floods your soul. Notice, please. Notice, 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 notice. By God. Notice he says. Let him come to me and drink. He that believeth on me, as the scripture has said, out of his belly shall flow what? Read it. That's that river of water of life. Woo! Woo! What is he saying? You get so full, you begin to release it out. You get so full, you can't contain it anymore. Hallelujah. Oh, glory. Oh, glory. He's talking about the Holy Ghost. Then the next verse says, This spoke he of the Spirit, that they who believe on him should receive. Hallelujah. Look at the next verse, verse 39. But this spoke he of the Spirit. Notice that river of life, that river of living water. It's the Holy Spirit. What is it? And he flows from the throne of the Father. And when you drink of him, your Bible says, there will be no more curse. And your Bible never lies. Glory to God. Our problem is we got too many folks in the church who are not thirsty enough to get up and come. Are you all here? So they live beneath where God has ordained. That verse over in Revelation, I didn't read it all, but when it said, you know, uh, uh, there will be no more curse because rather, but the throne of God in the land will be there. And then it said, and his servants shall serve him. You see, God wants us to serve him without the stress of a curse. He wants us to stop serving him under duress and strain and struggle. You see, that's always the curse. When God uh, uh, cursed Adam in Genesis chapter 4, he said, Adam curses the ground because of you. He said, it's going to bring forth briars and thorns now. And then he said, and you shall live in sorrow every day of your life till you die, he said. See, that's not God's will for the body of Christ. It's not as God's will that we struggle and strain under a curse. Are y'all here? Breaks your heart to see that's where much, most of the church is today. And there's a remedy. There's a river. There's a flood. It's called a flood of blessing. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Now notice what he said, verse 39. But this spoke he of the Spirit, whom they that believe on him, what? Say it loud. We should receive the Holy Spirit. See, there are many people who have believed on him who haven't gone on and received the Holy Spirit. But the Bible says you got to believe on him according to the scripture. Once you do that, now you qualify. See, the Holy Spirit is not for the world. Once you become a believer, you're in a position to get yourself full of blessing, full of the Holy Ghost. Hallelujah. Notice, if you will, please, Isaiah chapter 43. Isaiah chapter 43. And look at verse 19. Woo, glory. Lord, help me to get through all this. Woo, glory. Look at verse 19, please, Isaiah 43. Are you all there? Yes. Notice it says, God is speaking, but I will. 
This is God. I will. Behold, I will. I will do. I will do a new thing. Well, you see, the Holy Spirit baptism is a new thing. This is in reference to the New Testament experience. Because you have to believe on Jesus according to the scriptures first. But notice God is prophesying, I will do a new thing. Now it shall spring forth. Shall you not know it? I will even make a way in the wilderness and rivers where? Now you see what's in the desert is death. What's in the wilderness and in the desert, the Bible says, are scorpions and snakes. Are y'all here? Death, hunger, misery. But God says, I'll make a way there for you. There, listen, one, see, the definition of a desert is that it's dry. God said, I'll send you rivers there. See, this is a new thing. I'll send you rivers there. Look at the latter part of the next verse. I give waters, I give waters in the wilderness and rivers and rivers in the desert to do what? To do what? To give drink to my people, my chosen. Well, now this is, of course, talking about the Holy Spirit. See, God wants to give us these waters. He wants to give us these rivers. And notice that we got to drink, you see. Jesus says, if you drink of these, this water, he says, rivers will flow out of you. You have an overflow effect. My God, listen, once you get full of this blessing, blessings begin to flow out of you. Praise God. Everywhere you go, there's a blessing. Oh, my God. I, see, I, I don't carry a curse. I just carry blessings everywhere I go because I let the Holy Ghost flow. Now, notice what that Bible says. Notice, God says, this, these waters are to give drink. To who? But he's not going to make you drink. See, Revelation says this is for all the churches, plural. All the churches. All the individual assemblies. But God is not going to make every individual drink. you got to have a thirst to drink. Look at verse 22. The next verse. But thou hast not called upon me, O Jacob. In other words, you had no thirst for the water of heaven. Notice to get the water, you have to thirst, you have to call. Notice he says, I have these waters for you, my people. But Jacob, my people, haven't called. That's tragic. Look at this, uh, this is heartbreaking. Verse 28, what's the first word? Therefore or because... Because you haven't drank of the rivers I have provided. Therefore, I have profaned the princes of the sanctuary. That speaks of conquest. They've been conquered. And I have given Jacob to the what? And Israel to the what? That's shame and defeat. Now notice God says... You were in the desert, you were in the wilderness. I provided for you life. I provided for you living water, but none of you cared to, th- to drink. And now I must release you to the curse. Why? Because these waters would have driven out the curse. Because you didn't drink of the water, bam! The curse must stay on your life. Notice verse 28 there speaks of the curse. The curse is a consequence of not being spirit-filled. Can I get somebody to say something? Man, if these verses be true, get out of my way. Let me get to the Holy Ghost. Smooth out my, let me get to the river. Glory to God. Amen. Look at the last four words there of, of verse 14. No, wait, wait, wait. Notice chapter 44, look at verse 3. I'm sorry. Notice three verses down now. Notice God says, For I will pour water upon him that is what? See, that's the qualifier. These waters are for the thirsty. These are waters of the river of life. Where these waters flow, your Bible says, no more curse. No more curse.
curse. Notice. For I will pour water upon him that is thirsty. Even floods, rivers upon the dry ground. I will pour my what? That's what the water is. The Holy Spirit. I will pour my spirit upon thy seed. And then what else he calls the spirit? You read it. And my what? Notice he calls the Holy Spirit his blessing. He says when you don't, don't thirst for it, you get a curse. Do you see how God uses these two words? A spirit filled life is the blessing. To reject the Holy Spirit's infilling for whatever theological twisted opinions you have, God has no choice therefore but to let you have the curse. Because what he's given to counteract and break the curse is the flood tide of the Holy Ghost. Amen. Can I get a loud amen? amen? Thank you, Jesus. Now look at chapter, verse 14. Notice those last few words. The rain doth nourish it. The rain, that's the rain of the Holy Ghost, does what? That word nourish literally means this. Please listen. To cause to make large. See, anything that receives a nourishment grows large. The rain does a nourish it, that is, to make large. As in body, mind, estate, or honor. See, when you receive these waters, your, your estate expands. When you nourish your mind, your mind increases, you see. This word entails every kind of nourishment. But notice this nourishment comes from the what? The rain. Say the rain. The rain. Say it again. Say it again. Of course, he told us he's talking about the Holy Spirit. He's told about what he called the blessing. When you receive the blessed Holy Spirit, when you receive the blessing of the infilling of the Holy Spirit, your Bible says your life becomes nourished. What does that mean? You grow. You increase. You advance. You get promoted. Thank you for watching Victory For Today. To request your copy of today's broadcast on CD or DVD, call 407-296-7131 or email us at victoryfortoday at aol.com. Until next time, remember, only through the cross of Christ, there's hope for tomorrow and victory for today.